Fill her up. Plug in. Fuel up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Mm. Um, what are we right, looking so, at? I see you pondering hard there. Well, there's a few stories here. Ben Askren claims there's a 98% chance that he's going to fight in the UFC. That's kind of interesting. Why does he say that? What is he basing this on? Where does he get the 98% figure from? That's a strange number to say. That sounds like it's almost done deal. That sounds like he's almost got a contract on its way. A contract, for, for want of a better word, is looming. But that said, that 2% is uh, the make or break. So why does he say that? Tom Canfell on Twitter asked him, uh, Ben Askren, are you going to fight in the UFC, mate? Can you give a percentage on it? So the percentage that Ben Askren gave was 98%. Um, I don't know where that comes from. I know he's had a contentious relationship with Dana White. He spoke out against the UFC and Dana White super early in his career, and I think that sort of held him back um, there. Um, you know, also being that he's a he's a he's an extremely high level wrestler and grappler who I think makes exciting fighters look bad. And I think the UFC has never really loved that. We watched that with like guys like John Fitch, Yushin Okami. There was guys that were like, they were crushing people, and they made nobody look good, and they weren't really fighting these crazy, exciting fights. They were just making crazy, exciting fighters look sort of boring. And then the second they lose, I think the UFC looks for almost like a way out because they're killing future stars. Um, so I almost feel like Ben Askren sort of falls into that category because, you know, it only worked for a few people. GSP was like the only guy, in my opinion, who it really worked for that, you know, I don't want to say lay and pray, but getting on top, using ground and pound, you know, you know, just grinding out a decision over and over and over again and then becoming really, really popular. That really that that formula never really worked for too many guys. And not in winning, yeah, but sure. in terms of becoming a star. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Ben Askren, by all accounts, I mean, I'm no um, you know, encyclopedia on wrestling accolades, but you know, certainly Ben Askren, his wrestling uh, is fantastic. I believe he's still undefeated in mixed martial arts, and the way he gets the job done is by taking his opponents down and out wrestling them and staying on top. And he's not particularly exciting. And for the UFC, it is a tricky one because, of course, you want to say you have the best fighters in the world, but it is mixed martial arts. Now, the argument is, is that, well, it's up to the other people to stop them taking him down. But, you know, from an entertainment aspect, which kind of goes against the whole sport aspect, you don't want a guy that's just going to take someone down and lie on top of them and be very, very uh, boring, for want of a better word. Unfortunately, to the layperson, it does come across as quite boring. I can appreciate the skill on display, but still, you know, it does stifle the opponents. It stifles the actions. It, it makes the crowd frustrated. You start hearing the boos. It makes them less inclined to come to another event. And as you say, if they're going to take out some of the best, biggest stars, most exciting people in the UFC, just by taking them down and lying on them, you know, it, it's... It's not a smart move. It isn't. Of course, you know, you want to say you have the best fighters in the world, but you don't also don't want that to be detrimental to your brand and your product. You know, you want exciting fights. That's why the UFC put bonuses out there. That's why they say there's an extra 50K if you finish this guy in style or if you submit him or you knock him out or the fight of the night. they are incentives. We want finishes. We don't want 15 minutes, 25 minutes of somebody lying on top of somebody doing the bare minimum from getting stood up. Now, I'm a mixed martial arts purist, so I do respect that. But as I say, it is a very, very, it, 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 it's a fine line, you know. I mean, of course, you want to say you're a legitimate sport, but you also, you know, the certain sports. That's why wrestling isn't the best spectator sport in the world. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's you, a tough When one. you watch your son wrestle, do you, is it exciting for you or are you just like, fuck? No, of course it's exciting for me. I could watch my son I could stare at my son doing the most mundane task and find it exciting. You know, like any doting father, I sit there and go, oh, my God, mm. oh, bless him. Look at him. Oh, he's reading a book. He's oh, Look at him. He's actually, you know, of course. So when he's wrestling, yeah, my heart is beating in my chest so strongly, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and did that get you more into it, though? I mean, it had to have, right? Yeah, of course. What having one of my children compete in that sport? Yeah. Of course, and I have tremendous respect for wrestlers. I do. Uh, s seeing through my son Callum what they go through, the amount of intensity and the dedication that they need to be successful, truly blows my mind. And Callum, right now, I mean, as uh, if people listen to the podcast, they know he had a major surgery a couple of months ago now, 
uh, where his tricep was torn off the bone and a piece of the bone got tore off and they had to drill it back on and all this type of stuff. And he still isn't able to train yet. Uh, he's got his senior year in wrestling coming up. Well, I mean, the season starts real soon and he still hasn't even done a single training session because he can't. You know, we started doing some weights this week, working around the arm, but he can't use the arm at all. And, um, you know, I've said, right, listen, we're going to have to do as much weight training as we can possibly to get you strong. And we'll do lots of running and cardio because you're going to have to try and make up some ground. Because right now he's ranked fourth in California and he wants to win state this year, you know. But, of course, he is setting off uh, behind everybody because he just had bloody surgery. So it's a shame for him. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's a tough kid, a super, super tough kid. And as we've heard earlier in the show, the Bispings are are designed to deal with fucking crazy amounts of physical drama and bounce back and and be better than ever. So um, I'm sure, well, well, I'm well, sure he'll do great. We are gonna we are gonna wrap this up in a second, but it, honestly, piggybacking on what you just said, and I'm not saying this to try and say, oh yeah, we're so tough, we're you know, because I don't think that at all. But the doctor did actually say when when they saw him. And they, they, they did the MRI and all this. They're like, oh, my God. Just to touch your arm, you should be in agony right now. Absolutely. How are you not howling in agony? But he just come back from doing a full-on wrestling camp in Oregon. you know. Mm. And the doctor just couldn't believe that he was doing that. He said, you shouldn't be doing anything right now. You've just done a wrestling camp. It's insane. But uh, so, yeah. So, there you go. Best of luck with everything, Callum. All right. Well, listen. Bit of a hodgepodge show this one all over the place uh bear with us um everybody we'll do another episode towards the end of the week we'll make it happen at some point um what have you got to say to sign off on lewis anything, anything just want to say all? yeah anything. thanks thanks to everyone for listening uh yeah go to our itunes and leave us a five-star ranking tell your friends about it. sign up for the subscribe on the youtube for the latest videos of the show uh, and if you love the show we have uh, every episode we've ever done at gasdigitalnetwork.com use the promo code bym <laughs> That's really it, man. You know what I think we're going to do, Mike? Just because you, you made this point to me, and you were like, you're like, we plug too many things. We're subscribing to like 80 things, Twitter, fucking Instagram. We should just put a website up, Believe You Me podcast or some whatever, where they can just get every link for everything they want, all the sponsors, everything they could possibly have to do with the show. Let's do that, 100%. And if yeah. any one of our listeners wants to design a website for us <laughs> and host it for us, then, then we'll allow you to do so because that's, that's the type of people we are. You know, if you okay, if you want to do a whole website for us and host it for us and all that type of stuff and make it look super sexy and we can sell merchandise on there and all this type of stuff, okay, we'll let you do it. But on an Fine, important you twist note, it imagine that. All right, yeah, geez, God, okay. But think about this. You know, want to be web designers? You go into university or your job one day, and you're like, oh yeah, I know my resume. Um, I designed the Believe You Me podcast uh, website, which is actually a really highly trafficked website. And I don't want to be too pedantic about it, but uh, it's uh, got some great features to it. Uh, so, yeah, send me your thoughts. Send me your website designs. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the show. Uh, as I say, just kind of waffling on today with nothing, not a lot to say. But uh, isn't that what most podcasts do anyway? Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Give us a five-star review. Tell your friends. Retweet, share. All that bollocks. Have a good one. Take care. All right, Mike. Let's just take a second, oh. and and we got to talk about Blue Chew, which is I, I've been loving lately. I, I have the prescription for it, which it, it's incredible. Um, if you guys don't know what Blue Chew is, it's the same uh, active ingredient as Viagra or Cialis, and it is a chewable uh, performance enhancement uh, pill for the bedroom. So you know, it's it's if you guys want to enhance your love life for both you and your lover. Uh, this is a great way to do it. I'm gonna tell you right now. I love it. I know Michael Bisping. You, you haven't gotten the prescription yet. I'm. You got it. You got to give it a try. It was so easy. Three minutes later, I had a prescription on the internet. I didn't have to go see a doctor and have a weird conversation. I didn't have to go into a pharmacy and have the girl behind the counter fill that prescription and have her be like, mm, "You're having prescription filled," and make a face, mm -hmm. nice and discreet. Comes right to your house. I love it. My chick loves it. Does she really though, Lewis? I I, I would swear that she hates the day that Bluetooth was ever invented because now <laughs> she's got to deal with the Puerto Rican rattlesnake on a way longer, more regular, harder, more intense basis. You know, before three minutes was the key word. That was the time that would, would be. Now he's in there like some fucking porn star going rep after rep after rep. He's doing the American Psycho. He's doing his bicep. You're 
tenting into the window, into the mirror. He's blue chewing all over the place. Kim doesn't know what's going on. He's like, ah, let's go. I'm a sexual Tyrannosaurus. But if that's what you want to do, you want to get involved and you want to also be a sexual Tyrannosaurus, we have a great deal for you, of course. Please visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment free when you use the promo code BYM. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. That's blue, B L U E, chew.com, promo code BYM, and rock your partner's world.